Inquiring about central authority in Igbo land during ancient or medieval times is not necessarily an Igbo question. Traditional Igbo society was not governed by the monolithic concept of one ruler, but rather systems of governance based on the needs and concerns of various Igbo communities. Decisions were typically made by a king and a group of administrators or a collection of elders. And some of these elders and administrators were women. And so, when British colonialism imposed their standard of government, the Igbo women could not stand for it. What up African world, it's Hon Simir and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. And with a word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. Our Black Truth is black owned and operated and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can download the app at Google Play or the App Store and you can visit the website at OurBlackTruth.com. Links to everything in the description box below. To begin, as with all my videos that focus on a particular ethnic group, it would be helpful for members of that group to improve the value of this video with their insight because many sources that speak on Africa don't have access to or outright omit traditional African perspectives. So if you are from the Igbo ethnic group, please feel free to contribute to this video by adding or taking away from the information presented so that we can all move ever closer to a proper historical lens. Also, this video involves some violent history, but I wanted to do my best to ensure that no one is triggered. And so I will be omitting the overwhelming majority of that segment. There will be sources posted at the end of the video if you want to read the history in full uncensored form. Before we get into the Women's War of 1929, or what's traditionally known as the Ogu Omunwanyi, we have to understand a little about what Igbo society was like for women before British colonialism. In pre-colonial Igbo society, the government was not controlled by a single individual, but decisions were typically made by a king and a group of chiefs or collection of elders. This organizational strategy was male-dominated but allowed for female contribution based on male affiliations or kin. Because the governing body was so wide, a diverse group of men and women alike were afforded influence in decision making. This system of cooperative rule between genders is referred to by scholars as dual sex organization. While male domination within government existed in these societies, a balance was ensured by a structure of female authority that ran parallel to male-oriented hierarchies. This theme of stability being maintained through cooperation between sexes is a manifestation of a cosmological ideology centered around gender duality. This cosmology, or understanding of the nature of the universe, was common in local traditions throughout Igbo land. It is based upon the idea that the universe is upheld through the cooperation of opposing forces. Igbo women seem to have been integrated for the most part into Igbo society, politically, socially, and even economically. This was in stark contrast to the values of the British, who apparently viewed Igbo land as an extreme expression of femininity. For them, it was, and I quote, an untamed feminine society, and was therefore in desperate need of masculine rule to restore balance. Now, of course, the oppression of women during colonialism didn't just happen in Igbo land, but perhaps, given the amount of agency Igbo women possessed before colonialism, the women in that region were not just going to roll over and succumb easily to their marginalization. The Ogu Omunwani, or Women's War, began in 1929 when rumors circulated that the British were going to tax Igbo women and their assets. One woman named Umwanyeru was apparently the first to rebel. A warrant chief came to count her property for taxation purposes, and she refused to allow him to do so. Verbal insults were exchanged and a physical fight proceeded. 
women gathered around in support of her and to protect her from the warrant chief who was working for the British. Igbo women, along with a few other local African women, began singing and dancing around the home of the local warrant chief. This was a local method known as sitting on or making war on a man. It was a method to affirm political autonomy. The violence that transpired struck a chord with Igbo women. They began to organize in a way that the British had never seen in that region. This organization and protest led to the arrest of the local warrant chief and a promise to stop the tax. But rumors of the tax remained. Thousands of women protested and unfortunately varying levels of violence from colonial authorities and their local agents took place. One of the primary goals of the women's protests was to get the colonial government to modify its system to include women and to reflect what it used to be in pre-colonial times. As mentioned previously, Igbo women were very much a part of ancient and medieval Igbo government, not as servants but agents of decision making and change. The values of western civilization at the time could not match the balance that traditional Igbo society seemed to have accomplished. A balance that, ironically, we're trying to achieve today. Instead of attacking British officials themselves, the women forced warrant chiefs to hand over their caps, which was a symbol of their ties to the British. Women also targeted livestock of chiefs and British palm oil stores, both representations of their economic contributions. By reassuming control of locations and goods that represented women, they utilized traditional methods of sitting on a man to retaliate against the wider colonial system. Igbo women and their allies were so organized that British authority panicked, making violent rash decisions in attempts to quickly put the movement to an end. The peak of the violence began in December of 1929 when women congregated to make their formal demands known. According to Dr. Nkiru Nzegwu, the significance of the women's war was not just a matter of courage, but it was proof that Igbo women's independence in pre-colonial Nigeria was indeed an established fact. The fiery strong response of these women to the erosion of their rights conclusively showed not only that women had political roles and rights in pre-colonial times, but also that the political institutions through which they claimed these rights were integral parts of the political tradition in Igbo land and Ibibio land. It also showed their political acumen, foresight, and vision, and revealed the existence of a powerful, highly efficient political structure with networks that transcended ethnic boundaries. The Ogu Omunwanyi attained a level of success by changing how colonial authorities approached the government in Igbo land. Hired anthropologists studied Igbo culture, which ultimately led to a reform in the system by forming a traditional administration. One source states that some women were allowed into this traditional administration, but others state that aside from a few cosmetic changes, women were still not allowed entry into government. Despite all of this, Igbo women managed to influence something beyond their immediate needs and concerns. The Ogu Omunwanyi has been linked to the beginnings of Nigerian nationalism and to other social movements in Nigeria like how Nigerian women got their objectives met against an oil company in 2002. All this likely due to the legacy and influence of the Ogu Omunwanyi. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in this continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.